Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another of Max's world famous tool reviews. If you're just joining us now, I try and do a tool review well, every week or two, every couple weeks, something like that, and there's a playlist of them right up there where you can go check them all out if you like. And I can already hear some of you guys out there probably thinking, hey, that's not exactly what we had in mind when we said tool reviews. If you're new here, we do stuff with lawn equipment on the channel all the time. And maybe at some point I'll review the tractor, but really, I want to give it a second 50 years for me to really refine my opinion of it. So anyhow, what we have here is my Ryobi 18 volt cordless easy edge string trimmer. When I say cordless, I mean you don't have to plug it in the wall or put gas in it, you know, it runs on these. It still has a cord down here, or it's supposed to. We'll get to that in a minute. Really, I bought this thing as sort of a joke. This thing is a refurbished model. It is now on its second season, and it came with a, another 18 volt, I think this is a two amp hour battery. It's literally the cheapest one you can get from Home Depot. There's no indications on it or anything else. And the battery itself is also reconditioned but whatever it works fine and this charger that you can see i haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of it's just been hanging out because i have my six bay ryobi charger and i'll throw you a link to the, my thoughts of that guy right up there but i got all that stuff for 50 bucks so i figured eh, why not give it a shot and when i say i thought the thing would be kind of a joke that's because my primary weed eater is a steel fs55 this thing is a straight up commercial weed eater Maybe things have changed since I bought this one, but at the time I bought it, you couldn't go down to like Lowe's or Home Depot or anything and buy these. You had to actually go to a real outdoor lawn and garden store to get this kind of stuff. And again, at the time I bought it, this was basically the highest horsepower per cubic centimeter of engine displacement that I could get with bicycle handles, because I really like the bicycle handles for the type of weed eating this thing does. If you're new to the channel, you probably haven't heard me say this before, but the house I'm in now, I rent. The house I owned prior to this residence had a full fenced-in backyard. I had a deck. I had a propane tank. I had all kinds of crap to weed eat around. I would run this thing for like three or four hours in a shot to do everything. And that is not something I would expect to do with the Ryobi very often. Really, although the Ryobi is very, very good for what it is, the performance of this thing is just <laughs> incredible. But anyway, this guy runs line that's almost twice the diameter. I think it's like 1.4 horsepower or something, which doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind it's like a 29cc motor. But this guy is the real deal. So when I say that the Ryobi, I expected it to be a, a joke, this is kind of the benchmark that I had on my mind, and it really isn't a joke. You'll see. So coming from the steel to this thing, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot. The good news is the whole reason I bought it, die mosquito, die. First one of the year. May you rest in peace. But the whole reason I bought this thing is because the property that I live at now has zero trees. There are basically nothing to weed eat around. You know, you got an air conditioner, uh, driveway, sidewalks, mailbox, crap like that. And I'm more of a let Roundup do my weed eating guy anyway. So really, I don't need a whole lot of weed eater for where I'm living at now. But what surprised me is how much weed eater I actually did get for my 50 bucks. The first surprise I had with this thing is that it actually isn't short on power at all. It will take out stuff about half to three quarter inch depending on what it is it's not going to saw down trees like uh, pretty big nasty ragweed that tends to sprout up wild here in indiana where i live it'll pretty much just take that stuff right out and that's just with the factory line it came with which is nothing special battery runtime even out of one of these little cheap batteries you know the one it came with is actually pretty exceptional running it wide open and making it sing for its supper the whole time probably get a uh, half hour 20 minutes half, between 20 minutes and a half hour just out of this cheap guy with a four amp hour battery i can run it pretty much all i need to it'll run for about an hour we're speaking in generalizations here because it depends a lot on what it's doing if i'm doing something where i'm walking more than i'm actually working that makes a difference or if the stuff isn't too terribly heavy that makes a difference you know myself i'm a child of the 80s so i grew up with stuff like this run on like nicad batteries where they would run for like five minutes and then take 12 hours to recharge so whenever i get something like this and it actually does the job and doesn't complain it's just mind-boggling to me the reason i say that is because i think a a lot of people might still have their minds kind of stuck in the old ways because I certainly did and you know that's another reason why I just spent the 50 bucks on this because I just wanted to see what was going to happen and you can see I've been none too precious with the care of this thing it's all just packed right full of grass there's a bunch of moldy old grass and mud and crap up in the line guard or whatever you want to call this thing I just run this thing hard put it away wet and I don't give one single crap about it and that's actually one of the best things about it in my opinion you know, as a car guy, as a mechanical guy, as a, you know, equipment guy, or whatever you want to say I am, I actually feel bad when there's stuff that I own that needs maintenance and hasn't gotten it. Like this guy right back here is a perfect example. And if you're curious about the tractor, I'll throw a playlist up there for you where the stuff gets neglected and it becomes another schedule of work on my agenda 
and it starts to weigh on me emotionally that I just have more stuff to do, more stuff to do. Like right now, I feel terrible because I haven't run my steel in probably five, six years at this point, and it could use run. I'm sure that it could use the plug looked at and stuff like that, and it's just sitting down there neglected, and I feel bad about it. I don't give a single crap about this thing. No emotional investment in it whatsoever because all I do is plug one of these into the back of it and take it out and run it, and if it breaks tomorrow, I'm just going to go buy a new one. Hang on. I think we might be able to execute mosquito number two. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, just missed. So for me, that's great. This thing is 100% maintenance-free, trouble-free, thought-free. The only thing you have to do is load string onto it, which is actually one of the things we're going to do here in a second. Because after two years, I probably only used the thing, I don't know, maybe eight times. Because again, I'm a Roundup is my weed eater kind of guy. It's taken about two years for me to use up all the original spool that came just loaded on the thing as a refurb. And I'd very nearly forgotten, because you can just push these buttons and turn this head 180 degrees, like so. Then you can just take the thing along the edge of your driveway or whatever and just beat the weeds and grass and crap back. I'd never actually used that feature until a couple days ago, despite me having this thing for years. I would always just run up to the edge of the driveway and just bury it old school. This totally works better. It's really nice that you can just in a few seconds flip it back and forth because there's you know no mechanism in here. There's just wires to connect up to the switch. So they give you 180 degrees to flip it around. It's really easy to do. It's really nice to deal with. And speaking of, that is what I was doing with it when it ran out of line. The line feeder mechanism on this thing is basically magical. I don't have any clue how it works, but it works so awesome. All you do is let off the trigger and get back on it. So I usually let it come to a stop and then get back on the power and it just feeds more line out. So there must be some kind of a centripetal mechanism in there that just clutches and unclutches. You don't have to bump the head or smack it on the ground or any of that crap. It's been great. The only time I've actually ever had the head off of the thing is late last year. The line actually just hit something and broke clean off. And that line could have been sitting in a warehouse house for who knows how long so it might have just been starting to get brittle deep inside the head but this line feeder is one of the greatest I've ever used and I've used probably about a dozen weed eaters right now at this point in my life so as is occasionally the case on my channel we're going to give you the review and we're going to give you a bit of a repair and then we're going to take the thing out and run it we've got some stuff back in a ditch behind the house it's like two feet tall that should be a lot of fun to just throw this thing into because I don't care I don't care a thing about it because it to me it is just an appliance but it's a really good appliance highly recommended that brings up another really interesting interesting thing about this thing. Home Depot actually sells like preloaded spools that you can buy and just swap out the spools so you don't have to mess with reloading it up yourself. I think that's a really neat option for this thing because this is targeting the type of homeowner that is exactly in the market for this thing, probably because they don't want the hassle of something gas operated and they may be less mechanically inclined. So they just want everything as Lego pieces and grab and go as they possibly can. My opinion is, hey, there's plenty of space in the world for everybody. So that's a really great option for a lot of people. I'm on the other side of that. I'm a mechanical guy. So you know, I'm going to be loading my own on. And you've been here for a hot minute. You'll know I'll never turn down the chance to go for an upgrade either. What we're going to use here is often referred to as sharpened line. What it is, it has a profile molded into it. So instead of just being and round like fishing line it's got all these edges on it that are actually cutting edges i've been using a similar line although like twice this size on my steel for years and it makes a huge difference this stuff just muy bueno on the upgrade scale and unfortunately at least the last time i looked home depot only offers like the conventional round string if they happen to see this video word to the wise home depot upgrade to this other string and charge people a couple bucks more in your like your good better best kind of hierarchy and i bet you'll sell it and if you're interested, I'll link this line in the description for you. I'm pretty sure I just got it on Amazon. You probably get it about anywhere you want. So anyway, enough of that. So all we have to do to reload this guy is there's one of these pads on each side that we push in. And of course, you're going to want to make sure your battery's not in it while you're doing this stuff. And then we sh that should pretty much just eject the center out of it. Come on, meow. And right there it is. Now look, it's not actually out of line. It did just break off. That, that's what I was saying it did to me last year. The line's just getting old and brittle. Wasn't enough left to worry about anyway. There's probably about a foot of line on there. And there you can see what I was talking about. That's just like regular straight line. And our new hotness here, you can see has those profile ribs around it. So that's actually like a sharp profile when it's spinning around. So those basically all behave as individual cutting blades. Pretty excited to get this stuff on here and then see what it'll do. Because this thing was pretty good before. And it looks like if you just wanted to go get the reload spools from Home Depot and put them in, all you really have to do is just grab the old one, pull it out, put the new one in, get your end run through the hole, and snap the cap back on. Probably about a one minute job. So that's really cool. For us, the spool is actually marked and it says rewind line. It shows us which direction we need to wrap it on. So all we're going to do is pluck this guy out of there and wrap our new line on it. And doing that isn't much of a big deal at all. You can see there's a little groove down in there. That's where we want to put our stray end of our line to get it started. I believe like so. 
So that'll just hang on to the end of it. And we see that actually shoots the line out in the direction in which we need to wrap it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I noticed in editing, it's been several days now since I filmed the entire video, including using it. I noticed in editing that I loaded the line on this thing backward, and the manual even shows it loading counter to the direction the line shoots out. And shockingly, the thing worked pretty much fine anyway. I can't even put into words how surprised I am by that. I need to fix this and do it right. You can actually see we used quite a bit of line off of it anyway, because we were just putting it to work, which you'll see here in a minute. But yeah, I was feeding just fine with it all loaded wrong, which is hilarious. So there you can see it's stuffed in the slot and it wants to go that way. We want to reverse that and actually wrap it on, you know, the way the arrows say. Through the rest of the video, you're going to see me putting this back in the wrong way. Just going to have to make believe. And I hope you guys remember stuff like this because I very easily could have just reshot this and edited it all out and not shown you my mistakes with warts and all, but I wouldn't be able to respect me in the morning if I did that and I don't think you guys would either. I think that a stupid mistake like this is something that's pretty easy for anybody to do and I'm certainly not above the law, so we'll keep it all in because we like to show you what actually happens around here. We want to go this way with it and just wrap it on. The real question is I really don't know how full this spool is going to be. So we're just going to say full. And just fill her right on up. So a few minutes later, I've got it loaded up with what I think is probably an appropriate amount of line. I don't think too much or too little. And I've got it loaded on there more or less nice and evenly. I didn't spend 100 years trying to get it just perfect. You know, a couple minutes later, we're done. Uh, one thing some of you guys might not know if you've fought with these before is normally they have little notches in the reels right there. And that is to do exactly what I've done there. And that's to take your stray end and clip it in so it doesn't try and unspool on you and run away while you're trying to get it reinstalled. So reinstallation should not be a big deal. Looks like these two cogs are part of the clutching mechanism. This button must actually move when it's loaded or unloaded or vice versa to allow the line to come out. But anyway, so we just put it in there more or less. Yeah, right, right there. I can feel that it's on those dogs. You don't have a lot of opportunities to screw that up. Might be a little easier to do this the opposite way. Stick our free end in the hole, get it started, and then slip our bobbin on, if it will. So you see we've got our line starter, our bobbin's in there. Let's just unclip that guy. A little bit of plier action to get him out, just to be a little more helpful. There we go. Spend the next 35 minutes looking for the cap for that thing, which is right here. I don't think it matters which way this goes back on. Snap her back in. Uh-oh. We're crossed up. We've done did it wrong. You can see I've actually got the line trapped underneath where that lock button is. So we're going to have to pop this head back out and tinker with that until we get it just so. Probably not a very big deal. And this is my first time ever loading this thing. So live and learn. And of course, I never read the instructions. That'd be cheating. I think it just needed a little helping hand to get where it needed to be. There we go. No big deal. So she is all done and ready for more service. There when I'm doing that, it's popping the clutch and letting more line out. So apparently that's just fully automatic and they've just got it engineered that way. Let's go take it out and see how it does. And to do that, we could just grab all these little weeds and stuff along the house and just normal kind of trimmer stuff that most of you guys would probably buy one of these things to do. But it'd be a lot more fun, I think, if we took it on out to the back 40 to that ditch you see back there and put it up against some stuff that I would normally get my steel out for. I promise you that most of that stuff is probably about two feet tall. And we're probably going to find all kinds of good things back there when we get going. Probably spiders and snakes and freaking sharks, warlocks, IRS auditors, all kinds of bad stuff. But I do these things for you guys. And assuming we don't break it doing that, then we'll just put it into trimming edging mode and we'll just come touch up some of the driveway and the sidewalk and stuff like that, which is much more normal for a tool like that. You might be able to hear one of my neighbors is already way ahead of me. Well, here we go. This stuff is tall. And behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth.
All that stuff is all pretty gnarly. And that was every bit of two feet tall. And this thing's just chewing it up. Let's go for this patch down here. They're more actual weeds, I think. Although we hit a couple ragweeds that were monsters. I think we hit a couple back in here that were like half inch around. Let's go after this patch, see what happens. Ignoring all the junk from my neighbor's trash that they don't pick up. Good grief, this thing is a monster with that sharpened line. You know, the camera's only gonna show so much, but wow. <laughs> this thing's just chewing it right up. Awesome. I can never be sure what you guys are gonna be able to see on the camera until after I film it. But you can see the giant holes we made back there just playing around with that thing. And with the naked eye in person, it's pretty freaking impressive. Let's head around the front of the house and try some edging.
Well, I gotta tell you, I found that to be pretty impressive. I figured the thing would do okay in the tall stuff out back. I just didn't realize quite how okay it was gonna do. This thing's a beast with that line on it. The string feeder on this thing really is amazing. When I was out back in that really tall stuff, I didn't have to do anything special at all. It just went and went and went. What you guys saw me do in total, out front, I probably did 20 feet of sidewalk both sides, and I didn't really give it a whole lot of break there. We were straight mining ant mounds and everything else. Out back, if I had to guess, I'd say that was between 10 and 15 square feet of weeds that were like two feet tall. And then after I stopped filming, I just went around the house and got this and that because I was out there at it. And with this four amp hour battery, we used half the battery. And this thing is usually a little weighted to the full side. So you may consider it two thirds of a battery. So overall, I'm absolutely pleased with this thing for what it is. I would not expect it to live very long if we sent it back to the ditch, you know, every day, all day long, and that's what it did, but it's clearly not what this guy's for. That's for a tool more like my steel. But for the kind of weed eating I need to do around here and the edging and everything else, this thing's just perfect. I actually looked it up again just to double check, and this thing was 50 bucks on refurb, and that's a one and a half amp hour battery it came with, not a two. And that's really not enough for one of these, in my opinion. This three is pretty good for the amount of property I have to do. I don't think I've ever run it out of battery. Or maybe if I did absolutely everything, I would. So the long and short of it is, this thing is just great. Pretty much like all my other Ryobi tools, for what I paid for them, I got no complaints. Really, even if I paid full price for this thing, I think I'd be pretty happy with the work it does. It's punching way above its weight doing stuff like what we just did. So really, that's all I've got to say about this thing. If you like these kind of tool reviews where it's not just a guy pulling one out of a box and telling you about it, and it's a guy actually putting in his hands and using it for a couple years in this case and getting some work done, consider coming back and checking out some of the other reviews. You know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But as always, guys, I appreciate you stopping in to watch this one, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.